Aristotle One of the most well-known historical figures of ancient Greece, he was a student of another famed Greek philosopher, Plato, but he gave himself a unique name since his teachings were widely based off scientific and factual reasoning. His teachings have paved the way for present-day mathematics, science, politics, and many other fields, which earned him the title of First Teacher. Hello everyone, welcome to Top 10 History, your hub for historical lists and amazing history facts. Today, we're going to go over the top 10 amazing facts about Aristotle. Make sure to watch until number 1 because the number 1 fact that we chose about the Greek philosopher might shock you. Before we begin, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications on because we release a new historical top 10 list every single day. Also, make sure to smash that like button. Alright, let's get right into the video. He was an orphan. Unfortunately, Aristotle had a bit of a rough early life. He was brought up in the city of Atarnius, which is located in modern day western Turkey. At the young age of 13, both of Aristotle's parents had passed away, leaving Aristotle an orphan without any parental support. As a result, a man known as Proxenius of Atarnius took Aristotle in and became his guardian. Proxenus took Aristotle under his wing and provided him the education that he would have received from his parents. Eventually, Aristotle was sent off to Athens to study with Plato at his academy. Plato lived in Athens for about 20 years before eventually moving away. His moving out of Athens was possibly due to a growing prejudice against Macedonians, which made Aristotle uncomfortable and fearful. Since Aristotle didn't have any parents or any family, it enabled him to move around from city to city as he pleased and with haste. He founded Zoology. So what is Zoology? Zoology is the study of animals, focusing on their behavior, class action, physiology, and other factors. And speaking about Aristotle traveling a lot, after the death of his teacher and mentor, Plato, he traveled back to western Turkey with his friends Hermias and Xenocrates. After his friend Hermias had passed away, Aristotle and one of his students, whose name was Theophrastus, traveled to the small island of Lesbos, where together they studied the various plants and animals on the island. As we sort of mentioned before, what made Aristotle different than other Greek philosophers was that he backed up all of his teachings with logic and scientific findings. Other Greek philosophers would only work inside their minds, teaching about the world without actually engaging with it. Aristotle actually traveled and did his own scientific research which he used to back up his teachings. And one of those teachings was zoology. He was on a mission to learn more about animals and their anatomy that he started to dissect them and it is believed that he may have been the first human being to practice dissection. He taught Alexander the Great. Now the ancient Greek world was apparently a small one. If we go backwards, Aristotle studied directly with another super famous Greek philosopher, Plato. But if we go forwards in time, Aristotle passed on his wisdom to some very notable Greeks who would also go down in history. One of those students was Alexander the Great, who would go on to be known as the great military leader who conquered the entirety of the Persian Empire. Aristotle was even invited by Philip II of Macedonia himself to teach his son Alexander. And Alexander was also reportedly a very good student, who respected Aristotle and took in a lot of knowledge and advice from him. Other notable students of Aristotle included Ptolemy and Cassander, who both eventually became kings and powerful leaders. It's no doubt that the teachings of Aristotle left a powerful mark on history for centuries to come. He founded the classification of animals. Classification involves putting animals into categories based on similar traits, and the more detail that this practice became over time, the more we were able to study biology, which led to breakthroughs in science and medicine. Well, this was all thanks to Aristotle, who was the first person to research and classify different animals. He started off by finding similar characteristics of different animals and started to put them into different groups. One example of this is that he made a category of animals with blood, and a category of animals that didn't have blood, such as jellyfish and corals. Another classification that came from Aristotle were animals that lived on land versus animals that lived in the water. He also made a hierarchy of animals based on the significance of the species to the world that we live in. To no one's surprise, he placed humans all the way at the top claiming that humans are the most significant species to inhabit the earth. This concept, however, was more based on his personal opinion. Number 6. His Studies in Physics In addition to his contributions in zoology and biology, Aristotle also contributed to mathematics and physics. However, it is believed that his contributions to physics weren't as strong as they could have been, since a lot of his beliefs and teachings were almost identical to earlier Greek philosophers, so there wasn't much originality to his teachings. For example, he believed that everything in the universe was made up of one of the four fundamental elements, which were water, earth, fire, and air, a very old school way of thinking that dates even before Socrates. 
In terms of physics, he believed that motion was described as the actuality of a potentiality, meaning any sort of change meant that something was in motion. He believed that physics was in sync with his philosophies about nature, meaning that anything can be learned by just simply observing and studying nature. He wrote the first book about psychology. Alright, so we talked about physics and we talked about his amazing contributions to zoology, as well as biology in general. Now let's talk about a whole other scientific field that Aristotle spoke about during his life, the science of psychology. Aristotle was actually the first person ever to write a book about the topic of human psychology, which was called De Anima, or On the Soul. In his book, he claims that the mind is simply just another part of the human body, aka we aren't controlled by some spiritual presence, but the mind is just another part of human anatomy that works symbiotically with the rest of our body. He divides human intellect into two categories which are passive and active intellect. For example, he believes that humans tend to imitate and model off of anything that provides us with happiness, pleasure, and satisfaction. These contributions to psychology were a huge step forward in the understanding of psychology as a scientific study which inspired much more accurate and deeper analysis of the topic. His views on ethics. In addition to physics, zoology, biology, and psychology, Aristotle has also contributed massively to the study of ethics, and his teachings in ethics might be his greatest contribution to the world. In the Nicomachean Ethics, you can find the best works on ethics by Aristotle, consisting of 10 books of notes taken at his various lectures. He had many different ideas about morals and ethics, which outlines the different characteristics of the ideal person. Aristotle speaks about the importance of confidence as it fuels one to face their fears and build up courage to be able to take on higher endeavors. Other ideal ethics that he highlights are the ability to resist temptation, temperance, courage, generosity, and that any ambition can be satisfied as long as it delivers on the honor it promises as well as the physical and literal outcome it also promised. Aristotle also believed in free will, and that it doesn't matter who your parents are or what society you lived in, everyone is responsible for their own actions. Number 3. His Contributions to Politics Alright, so what else is this man an expert in? We already talked about biology, zoology, ethics, physics, and psychology, but let's talk about just one more field of study that Aristotle will influence for hundreds of years to come. So the word politics actually originated in ancient Greece. The Greek word polis was used to describe a Greek city-state. Aristotle believed that in order to live a good quality life that they had to be a citizen of a polis. Aristotle once said that man is a political animal, meaning that in order for a man to be happy and to cure a permanent residence, that they have to have a strong political connections in order to do so. Aristotle used his knowledge of politics to his advantage. Much like his classification of animals, he classified the city-states into six categories, three of which he thought were good and the other three he thought were bad. The good ones being constitutional government, aristocracy, and kingship, and the bad ones being democracy, oligarchy, and tyranny. Of course, different time period, different ideologies. He had many nicknames. A lot of great figures in history had developed some kind of nickname or catchy title. For example, Alexander the Great and Ivan the Terrible. However, unlike the two historical figures just mentioned, Aristotle had many nicknames and they were a lot simpler. He achieved fame and respect throughout the land. He started to acquire various nicknames, one of which was the man who knew everything, which is a pretty honorable nickname to have if I do say so myself. Another man by the name of Thomas Aquinas gave him the nickname The Philosopher, claiming that he was really the only philosopher that the world ever needed. Another nickname that Aristotle received about a couple hundred years after his death was The Master. Like who we just mentioned, these nicknames didn't really catch on and last throughout history, as most people just refer to him by his name, Aristotle, although his name does roughly translate to The Best Purpose, so there may be some meaning to the name itself. He founded the Peripatetic School. Topping off this list is another very notable achievement of the ancient Greek philosopher. In Lyceum, he founded the Peripatetic School. It is believed that the school was named this because Aristotle had a habit of walking back and forth while he was giving his lectures. The Greek word for walking is Peripatetikos, which might have been the inspiration for naming the school the Peripatetic School. In this school, many of Aristotle's teachings were taught, including, here we go again, ethics, philosophy, zoology, biology, physics, 
politics, and even other subjects as well. Aristotle was not only a brilliant mind, but he was also a brilliant teacher. Did these facts shock you? Make sure that you subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you never miss out on more amazing historical facts and much more. If you like this video, check out this next video on the 10 amazing facts about Confucius. Alright, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.